Um, today, I'm here to introduce you how we govern the data in EA, and how we handle the data access as a service. I will introduce you how we govern the data access of Trino and how we expand the use case from Trino to Data Federation. This is my agenda for today. I mainly have six sessions. I will start with an introduction about our company and our department. And next, I will talk about the challenges uh, that we're facing when we are building the system. And next, I will talk about how we solve the challenges and how we implement the system. And after that, I will talk about how the system is being used in EA and uh, what we're still working on and the future opportunities. Uh, let me first briefly introduce our company. We are Electronic Arts. Uh, we carry dozens of most popular games in the industry. Uh, we have sports games such as FIFA, Madden, and we have strategic games such as Apex, um, Battlefield, and also it takes two these kind of games which are super popular in this a couple of years. Uh, our games are carried and maintained by different game studios. Uh, you can see some famous names here, uh, such as BioWare, DICE, Frostbite, Pogo. All of these are famous game studios. Um, our game studios create uh, lots of data in the game and also our players. The data volume could reach terabytes every day and accumulate to petabytes all the time. Who we are? Uh, we are EA Digital Platform, EADP, and uh, our department mainly uh, and our game studios rely on us to capture the data, to store the data with proper storage and process the data with proper engines. And they also rely on our science and data analyst teams to uh, uh, analyze the data, get the inside of data and make right decisions. So it's the it's our job to provide the game studios a central platform with the unified data access to the to all our data. Until now, um, our department has accomplished that our data platform support about forty game studios. Uh, not only existing studios, but also the new acquisitions such as Codemaster and Glue Mobile. Uh, until now, we are handling terabytes of data generated every day and uh, totally pet by scale data uh, for all the time. Our department can provide solutions to our game studios uh, in terms of different business needs. Um, the different business needs, including, uh, for example, recommendation, like game studios would like to analyze our users' behavior, users' preference to give them proper recommendations. And the business needs also including all kinds of dashboarding for game analysis and also all kinds of gaming campaigns. And all these um, all these uh, business requirements relies on different kinds of data queries. So query engine is very important in our department. And Trino has been widely used in playing a critical role for to support these kind of queries. And our why we choose Trino, the reason is because uh, we also have different kinds of query engines in the before, such as Hive and uh, some other options. But we realized that uh, after analysis, we noticed the high performance of Trino, the cost efficiency, and it's highly scalable, and many other good things about Trino. So it is playing a critical role to support ad hoc queries, to support ETL workflows, to support the queries from BI tools, and also we have a conversation bot, uh, so Trino can support the interactive reporting. In all these queries and workflows uh, support our all the business requirements such as recommendation for producers, dashboarding for marketing, and also campaign for them. Uh, next, I'll talk about how we use Trino, how Trino is, is deployed in our department. 
Uh, on top of Trino, we also have many other features. Uh, we have UI, we have plenty of API, uh, for, and also we have gateway built up on it. Uh, our users can submit the query through either UI or the API that we developed or through the JDBC client, and all their queries goes to our uh, to Trino gateway. Our Trino gateway will route the user's query to the proper press, uh, Trino cluster. We have many Trino clusters, and the gateway will find the proper one to run the query. And we also have workload management API. Uh, for our cluster admins, uh, the users can actually self-serve to call the workload management API to scale up and down their own uh, Trino cluster. Uh, until now, uh, our Trino cluster, this whole environment, it's supporting millions of queries every week. Um, it's supporting hundreds of active users. And uh, totally, uh, we have more than 30 clusters now, and it's over 15K CPU cores. Um, like we mentioned before, um, our department supports all the use cases from all the game studios. So Trino is not the only use case. And we also have the other query platforms such as Spark and also some vendor solutions of query engines. Uh, they all need to read data from the common storage and the, the query result, if there is any query result, it also goes back to the common storage. So the data is fully federated among them. In, in our data federation umbrella, all the users, our clients, servers and databases, or third party or first party data, they all come to this common storage. For the query engines such as Trino, Spark, and query engines from different studios, they all query from this common layer. And then the query engine and all the query results support all kinds of BI tools for visualization. In this process, in the when the data is becoming federated, data governance is becoming an important topic. We need to govern the data access from different layers and make sure that all the engines, all the users in different engines have the same access everywhere. From the storage layer, um, our cloud our cloud object um, uh, our cloud object are all stored in the same storage layer and currently they are managed by access roles. We also have a common data catalog layer where all the metadata are stored there. It is also controlled by access rows. On the application layer, we have Ranger, uh, which controls all the application accesses. And on top of Ranger, we have self-developed DAS system, data access as a service, to enforce the consistent data access across data platforms. That's the point where we develop this DAS. Uh, in the next session, I will talk about the challenges when we develop the data access as a service. Uh, first, first is to um, solve the problem of ACL scalability. Uh, Trino ACL. In Trino, the data ACL is managed by a config file. This config file is in a certain JSON format. Uh, you can see that in the JSON uh, file, you can define the data accesses of catalog uh, on the catalog level, schema level, table level, and even column level now. Uh, but as I mentioned before, our Trino use case is growing. We have more than 30 clusters. We have more than 2,000 customers. We have more than a million tables. This file is growing into a larger scale that becoming difficult to manage. So instead of a single file, we need an ACL management system. We need the system to visualize the data accesses. We need to search and filter and cluster by users or resources to manage these ACLs. And in the meanwhile, 
when the new policies are added in, we need the system to help us resolve if there is any conflict. Our second challenge is because of the heterogeneous of the systems in our department. Having one um, central, having one ACL management system is not enough yet. Uh, we need to make sure that the ACLs can be adopted by the other data platforms. Um, we have many, many kinds of engines and a platform in our department, and they all manage their ACLs in different ways. For example, Trino uses a JSON file, a config file, uh, but for some uh, AWS Echo uh, products, they prefer to use IAM roles to manage the data access. For other engines such as Spark, these are kind of uh, they rely on the privileged tables built in the uh, SQL database to manage the um, access. And even some other platforms, they use role-based access control, which is a different story comparing with Trino is based on user account. So we have these kind of different platforms managing ACL in different formats. We need such kind of uh, translation principles to make sure that we can cast the um, central, um, we need to cast the data access into different formats and being adopted by these platforms. Uh, and this translation process, including the casting rules to resolve the resource definition and it needs a sales scope to define that. For example, if some um, platform does not support column level, how to set the casting rules and including a trans uh, translating grammar. For example, if it's translating to a file or to a SQL command uh, and all these should be predefined. Our third challenge is how to maintain the, con the ACL consistency. Uh, even we have such kind of uh, access control management system and we have the translation rules that we defined, we can still not um, give the freedom to our um, clients or the engine platforms to sync the policies by themselves. This system has to be centralized. Uh, the reason is because uh, we cannot, we need to guarantee that the data access is consistency all the time. For example, currently we made a change through the central portal. And for example, a user does not have privilege anymore, but some data platform might sync up later or sync up wrong comparing with the other platforms. Then it happens that some user have access and the user have access on some platform, but some does not. So this is not tolerable. We need the service to be centralized, all the sync to be triggered at the same time. And we also need to have a monitoring system that keep checking the systems, keep checking the uh, accesses to make sure that everyone is aligned among different platforms. So these are the three challenges we faced. To resolve the problem, this is how we design the system. Uh, we design our centralized access management system, and this system has single source of truth. It has a UI and plenty of APIs for our admins to manage the ACLs. We have uh, uh, plenty of services to guarantee the ACL translation to different platform languages. We also have monitoring services to make sure that all the ACL changes are in sync across different platforms and in sync with the common uh, with the single point of truth. In this way, uh, DAS, this our data access as a service, is easy to use, is widely adopted by different platforms, and is guaranteed consistency among them. Uh, that is how we design the system. That is our design goal. And next, I will talk about how we implement the system. Uh, here, I will briefly introduce uh, how many different components we have in the data access as a service. Uh, for the central portal, we take advantage of render and we build up more features on top of it to make it EA render 
uh, we have an updated UI, API, and uh, storage. Um, we also updated it with streaming services, uh, streaming services. So for all the new accesses or updated accesses made through Ranger, uh, the changes will all go to the event queue to be consumed by different platforms. Our Ranger also periodically generates a snapshot table, which works as an initialized status, single point of truth for all the uh, environments. For any of our data platform, such as Databrick, Trino, or other vendor solutions, uh, if they wanted to get on board on this data access as a service to share the common access, they need to call our onboarding service. Our onboarding service will give them an initialized status and then give them two sync services, two sync jobs. Uh, one is a sync job which will parse the event to the platform and a monitor job, which guarantee the ACL on the platform is, is in sync with the render. So briefly, you can see that we have four main components. One is render, one is onboarding service, one is sync job, and the other one is monitoring job. Uh, in the next session, I will deep dive a little bit on how we implement the onboarding, sync, and the monitoring jobs. Uh, I will use this study case to talk about how a new platform will get on board into our system. Uh, for example, a data warehouse wanted to share the common data access then it needs to call our onboarding API with the warehouse metadata, for example, the warehouse ID and token and other metadata, and also the resources and users they wanted to onboard to the system. Um, the, the warehouse might carry a specific table uh, and some users to be shared uh, among the other platforms. Our API, onboarding API, will check the privileges uh, on the data warehouse. And then it will, um, it will uh, send it to Ranger to resolve if there is any conflict, if there is anything to merge, and make a final decision. Uh, for example, a specific user at EA wants a select permission to a schema. And then this request will go to Ranger. And Ranger will check if this one is conflict with anything. If not, um, if not, then this user will be added. And if it will be merged into other existing policies, it will also merge. If this become a new event, it will go to the event queue. And in this way, uh, this event will later on be synced by all the other platforms. But in the very beginning, uh, after the onboarding, it will get an initialized uh, status, which is the latest snapshot. Then this system gets onboarded with initialized data policies, and, and it will get a sync job and a monitor job for this warehouse itself to start syncing events and monitor the consistency. Next, I will talk about how DAS sync the ACL changes to the warehouse. Uh, any change through Ranger will become an event in the queue. The event will tell you what resource is being changed, what was it before, and what is it after. So this is mainly saying that a table, a user does not have access to this table before, but now we want, we want this user to access the table. And this becomes an audit event. And then the, the sync job for this warehouse will trigger at the specific time. It will sync this event. And it will pull the rule to parse this event to the platform language. For example, this is a, a Databricks warehouse, a Spark warehouse. Then it will be translated to a grant statement. And this statement will be pushed to the warehouse, so the warehouse is in sync with the central render. So this is how we sync a change, a policy to a data warehouse. And next, uh, very similar, this is how we monitor and validate if the data, if the access is in sync between the warehouse and a render. 
the monitoring job will be triggered at a specific time. And then it will pull the access status from the warehouse. For example, for a specific user, for a resource such as a table, if the user have access or not. And then it will call render to verify, to check if there is any conflict. As we mentioned, render is the single point of truth. So everything should be aligned with the central render. So if there is any conflict, we will raise an alert to the warehouse owner and also correct the error to the warehouse. In this way, uh, if the render says this user cannot access this table, then this access will be revoked. So this is how we monitor and validate the data access. Uh, DAS has already been implemented and being used in our production system. Uh, our current render is managing more than 150 policies for the federated data access. Uh, we also enabled self-serve security zones, so our game teams uh, can self-serve the policies by themselves, and currently we support more than 10 teams of that. Totally, EA Ranger is supporting 2,000 users and uh, more than 200 production schemas and more than uh, millions of tables. And currently, the, the DAS project fully integrated between Trino, Databricks, and Redshift. Um, we have more than 20 Trino clusters and about 50 Spark clusters and one Redshift cluster. And currently, they are all in sync on all the policies. Um, data access as a service can onboard a warehouse very quickly. We have about 15K rules, and they can all be sent within 10 minutes. Uh, we have a predefined SLA to sync the policy, and it's scheduled at that SLA, and all the events can be synced to the warehouse within the SLA. And from the graph, you can see that sometimes uh, when new resources come in and new policies will be added in, we can support about, uh, about 2,000 policies per day. So you can see that the service is pretty popular used in our data platform. OK, uh, this is the uh, summary of this talk. This is the key takeaways. Um, tr uh, first thing I want to call out is Trino is widely used in EA. It's widely adopted for many business purposes. And second thing is that data is federated at EA which is uh, shared among different query engines. And third is for any data being shared across query engines, the access rules are also consistent. For any user, uh, regardless query engines, you all have the same access everywhere.